forum. I call this meeting to order at uh, 6, 6 06 p.m. Oh, is that strong enough? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to start with uh, committee announcements. Are there any announcements from the committee? None. Um, public comment. Seeing no community members in the audience will move on. If somebody does show up with, though, within the next 20 minutes, uh, we'll open up public comment again. Um, so moving on to, we're actually rearranging the agenda um, to give time for paperwork to be completed for our um, warrants approval. And we're going to move to item number four, appointments to the Joint Capital Planning Committee. Um, and just as a, as a brief introduction to this, this is our, um, for the purposes of planning Amherst uh, Capital, each year there is a, a committee um, that contain that is comprised of the finance com members of the finance committee from the town council, as well as representatives from the library board and the school committee, um, two members each from from those two boards. Um, last year, Eric, Mr. Nakajima, and myself served as the representatives um, from the school committee on that. Um, it is a um, intensive meeting schedule. The purpose of the meetings is to review all of the capital requests in town and to assist in prioritizing them. Um, and I'll look to Mr. Nakajima if he wants to add anything. Um, so it's very, it is very intensive. It meets typic typically in the past it's met on Thursdays and there seems to be some sort of gravity towards meeting on Thursdays. Morning, right? It, it is on mornings, and I asked the question because um, it is a difficult, it, I, having served on it last year, it yeah. was a difficult schedule to, you know, to, to integrate and accommodate with my personal work schedule, um, and knowing that last year we had difficulty, I think, finding two people that could yeah. <laughs> do that. I did pose the question this morning um, to Mr. Bockelman about whether there was flexibility in adjusting that, and the suggestion is is that the committee commit to the first meeting, so February 13th at 8.30. Um, they, that meeting has yet to be called. Yeah. And then, um, so, and I haven't heard back from Mr. Steinberg on whether this is an opportunity, but um, at that first meeting to have a discussion about the schedule um, for subsequent meetings um, throughout this budget planning year. Yeah, my recollection is there were a good six or seven meetings that were held. I would say this for anyone who hasn't participated on it before, it is an amazing opportunity to get very deep insight into what the capital needs are of the town, um, how we finance our capital projects, and um, what sort of the challenges and conversations that go involved in that. So if you, not only to advocate for the schools, but quite frankly, if you ever like wondered and been curious and been interested, in everything, every other department in the town that does this kind of um, work, and all of them do, um, it's really fascinating. Uh, it's it's actually it's kind of funny to me. I guess this is slightly editorial, but um, whereas I feel like our budget process is is largely driven by the professionals in the district, and we try to respond and provide input as we can. This is this is a different process where. My sentiment is, and I, I think maybe the chair would agree, um, you're intensively involved in the conversations. And if in not only for the schools, although there's a bias towards sticking to who you advocate for or who you represent, um, at the same time, if you have input, either from your personal life or just from obs observation, uh, into the other departments, it's actually very welcome. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a really, I'm not trying to talk myself off of it, but I'm just saying, like, in all honesty, <laughs> Um, if you're, if anyone's interested in doing it and thinks they could carve out the time or try to, it's it's really an amazing committee. I, w I would agree. It was it was um, interesting, and I would echo that point. That commentary, not just an advocacy of of the school's um, request, is is definitely welcome, and it is a robust. And and if the group, if the the membership continues from last year, it's a very engaged um, group in dialogue. So. Um, it is interesting. It's it is a time commitment. Um, um, yeah. As just some questions, how um, often does it stick to the two hour time limit? Is it like our meetings that often go past the? Time it doesn't limit? go past it, but it okay. goes to it. Okay. 
Did you think? I think yes. it's rough. Yes. Well, I, I, so, so I had to leave at ten fifteen consistently last mm-hmm. year. So that that's that's part of the concern is like how do we it, you know, ensure we have representation? It's within like five or ten minutes. Yeah. I mean, I, it's not. With the difference is like as you as as I was reading from your question, mm-hmm. we have like crazy violations of our yeah. of our time limits, and it's not like that. It's more like it goes ten minutes over, and if you have to leave, you have to leave. I have a, um, yep. a, a, a strong interest in this committee. I unfortunately have a standing work meeting at 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. every Thursday morning, and I am definitely not going to be, I'm going to be in Philadelphia, I know for certain, on February 27th. So I, I don't think I could commit to it at this time. Yeah. If it were to change its time, it's something I would be interested in, and I do believe I have a strong background in this area, so it's something I'm, I'm interested in, but I, I, I can't I can't serve at these times, unfortunately. I don't know if anybody else has interest. Um, I mean, I, I share the same general interest that people are describing, but just, I mean, the schedule is a complete non-starter for me. I'm out of town every Thursday. Uh, at are you work. really? Yeah. Almost every Thursday. No, I, mean, I just mean like that's it's like it's like it would be scheduled in a way you couldn't possibly yeah, do it. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, and it's the same thing. For me. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And my um, meetings in Springfield. So yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, maybe if there's if there's one person from our committee that's willing to do it, you know, we we may be able and and then something happens with this with the schedule after the first meeting, maybe then that opens up the opportunity for somebody else to to participate. But um, yeah, as it stands. Are you willing to? Repeat. Here. I am actually. I love doing this committee. Okay. I mean, I, I just, honestly. I mean, I, Ms. Spitzer. I, I think you'd love it. Yeah. No. I. I mean, it's a, it's a really a lot of fun. I mean, for geeking out on you know, mm-hmm. planner, right? Yeah, it's like exactly. th- this is really cool stuff. I mean, I, it, it, although it's an enormous time suck to mm-hmm. be honest with you, mm-hmm. which I'm not excited about, but I'm like. <laughs> I I'm excited wonder, about the content, and I know we can arrange my schedule to do it. So yeah, I wonder if we could, because I'd be willing to go to the February thirteenth meeting and sort of add add a voice to to the conversation about the schedule and represent you. Unless I think you advocate. No, I, well, I think it'd be good for you to come and advocate, especially I mean your chair. Yeah, I think it'd be great if you advocated for moving it because it's. Um, I love saying this stuff in camera. Camera, mm-hmm. but I mean, like my sense is from being on it two years in a row was that this is the time that's always worked for the people who are on the committee. And so there tends to be this, you know, inertia of, well, it works for all the people who are on the committee. It's like, yeah, well, that's really awesome. You know, but maybe another day would meet, work for another group of people who could then choose, be able to serve, right? I mean, yeah. so I don't, I don't, I would love for it to be able to, is there, you know, it would be great offline, I would guess, if um, either for either Ms. Spitzer or Mr. Demling to communicate with the chair and suggest other, I think morning is probably when they like doing it. Mm-hmm. If there are other mornings that you think might work better, communicate it to the chair so that you'd have that in your hip pocket of saying mm-hmm. you know of another day that could work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's a good plan. Okay, great. So so we have, uh, we're appointing Mr. Nakajima um, and potentially um, one or the other, uh, probably. Uh, and just to, be, just to be clear, if there's another day that works for both of them, I'm happy to give up my chair. Not because I don't love it, but in all honesty, it's a big time suck. But two, you both would get a, you'd love it. You both would love it. I said Ms. Pitzer would, but Peter, you'd love this committee. <laughs> you really would. It's worth doing if you can. Okay. So we'll work on, yeah. So let me just make sure, because I think I, I was going to, I'm going to be the communicator of this to Mr. Bachelman, so... Mr. Nakajima, and that will attend, and you'll attend the first meeting. Correct. And there'll be discussion, which won't be a surprise to him, given the email thread uh, about other members perhaps replacing you if the date or time changes. Yes. Is that an accurate? I just want to make sure I'm accurately reflecting yes. that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Any more thoughts? On? No. Okay. Looks like Mr. Slaughter, you're ready with the packet. So we're moving on to sure. item three, approving warrants. I have to apologize a little bit about these. This is not the traditional report you get, so I'll kind of guide you through it a little bit just to sort of point you to the sort of critical <coughs> tools. Because it got done in sort of two parts, and then I think we forgot to actually print the pretty report that you need to get with the blue on this. And so <clears throat> um, 
So what I'll put to, I didn't hand it to you upside down, I did. The top can look like this, my signature on it. the mic so can do it. So the total for this warrant is $38,963.19. And so after the first page, at the bottom of the second page, so 212.1, that's sort of the second piece of two pieces. And then the larger total is on, on the right page. actually on page number 26. Actually, that's the grand total there. That's actually the best place to look at the grand total right here. 38, 9, 30, 98. Except that's not right. <coughs> oh, this is frustrating me. This is what happens when people do stuff really early. Um, actually, page 13, I'm sorry. Page 13 has a total of 38, 721, 73. Okay. That with the 212 adds up to the total for this warrant. So there's some redundancy in the papers you've gotten because of it's actually multiple reports that have been printed and then reprinted. And again, I'm sorry for this tonight. I just uh, I thought it was ready to go and I went to look for the copy and it wasn't there. So I either misplaced it or we didn't get it printed. But Nonetheless. Ms. McDonald? Yes. Sorry. So can you state the um, motion that you'd like the school committee to consider? Sure. So Please. it would be, <laughs> I move to approve warrant S012720, dated 1-24-2020, for the amount of $38,963.19. Thank you. Do I hear a motion? Mr. Nectin? Uh I move that the Amherst School Committee approve warrant S012720 uh, for the amount of $38,963.19 um, for the invoice that's dated 124-2020. Moved and second. Seconded. Any discussion? No? All those in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous four zero. This is actually the current copy line. We have to sign. Okay. So while we're signing, um, we have some gifts. And then we want to read our gifts. Morris. Just to orient, there's two pages of gifts. So in your packet, the sort of second paper and the fourth, oh, excuse me, the third paper each have uh, gifts. So there's a total of three gifts, but it was on two different pages, um, which, you know, if it's helpful, I can explain. I think it's explained in the packet that um, the reason, but there, there are three gifts. Okay. Mr. Demley? Uh, I move to approve the following gifts from Alliance Energy LLC number 28072 Exxon Mobil to support Wildwood Elementary Math Science in the amount of $500, from Crocker Farm PGO to support Barnes & Noble gift cards from Book Fair Held to Crocker Farm Library for books and educational materials for Crocker Farm Elementary Library in the amount of $2,524. And from Crocker Farm PGO to support Barnes & Noble gift card from Book Fair held 2018 to Crocker Farm Library for books and educational materials for Crocker Farm Elementary Library in the amount of $1,654.74. Moved by Mr. Demling. Second. Second. Second by Kajima. Any discussion? Questions? Dr. Morris? Just very quickly. Uh, it's an opportunity, and we probably don't do this, I don't do this enough, um, to thank our PGOs for the generous support of our schools. In this case, the PGO organizes a book fair and takes the proceeds from the um, company and um, 
sends it to the library at Crocker Farm so there's more um, selection of books in the Crocker Farm library. It's just one example of the many of many in with the ways that PGO really supports our students and our schools. So I just want to thank the Crocker Farm PGO, but really take this opportunity to think about uh, all the families who donate incredible amounts of time to support our students. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Four, unanimous, four zero. And then we've now come to the end of our agenda. Mr. Nakajima. I move to adjourn. A second. Seconded. Okay. All those in favor? And 4-0.